Well, a very warm welcome back to Telford. I mean, this, this place is becoming a bit of a fighting city. Frank Warren and Queensbury and BT seem to be up here every other month at the moment, and uh, this Saturday night is no exception. We've got an absolute cracker. Top of the bill, Liam Davis and Yonut Baluta clash for the EBU European Super Bantamweight Championship. It's a cracking show, also featuring Anthony Yard, his return before he's got a very, very big fight coming up. And uh, there's a couple of good title fights. And just, just re a reminder that this is the second in a four-week stint for Queensbury and BT Sport. Last week, we saw Nick Ball light up York Hall. Of course, we're here this Saturday night. Next Saturday, we've got Zach Parker against John Ryder for the WBO Interim Super Middleweight Championship. And then there's a big, big show, December 3rd, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, the return of Tyson Fury against Derek Chisora. And of course, Daniel Dubois returns on that show as well. But let's talk about today. Let's, let's talk about the, the fights that we've got coming up on Saturday night here in Telford. I mentioned that there's title fights, and one of them's for the WBO European Super Lightweight Championship. This is a division that is, is flying right now in the UK. And uh, let's, let's speak to the guys involved. We've got Connor Parker and Ethan James. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with Connor. Connor Parker, welcome. Um, you've boxed for this belt about three years ago against Sam Maxwell. Um, it wasn't to be that night. How, how are you a different fighter now? And what did you learn from that experience? Well, the way I see it is um, I'm a lot more mature fighter now, and uh, I learned a lot from that fight. Um, yeah, it's just, I just see it as a big learning curve, and I'm ready to go. Do you feel as though we're looking at a completely different Conor Parker today? Yeah, yeah, I, I, th I think so, yeah. What do you think of our man Ethan James over here as you, uh, as you look down the table at him? I think he's a good prospect and uh, it should be a good fight. When you boxed Sam Maxwell, you were the, the young buck coming through. He was the experienced guy. This time, he's 22 years old, you're 27. You're the guy who's, who's a little bit older. Um, go on, talk. Well, the way I see it is I'm at the perfect age now. I mean, I see I'm coming into my prime years, really, 27. Your cousin, of course, Zach Parker. Um, what sort of inspiration are you getting from Zach? Because he, he's doing very well. Well, yeah, the, where Zach is, that's where I've only been. He's a very big inspiration. And uh, he's going to do well next week, I know he will. Well, what about yourself, then? What's the prediction for your, uh, your WBO European title fight Saturday night? I don't make predictions, but I'm very confident of a win. Okay, thank you, Connor. Thank let's, you. Uh, let's speak to Ethan James. We've got Connor Parker over there, very confident of the win. This is the title fight. This is the step up that you've been crying out for. You're 9 and 0 now. How are you feeling heading into this one? Feeling good, ready to step up. I've been asking for it, like you said, and come Saturday night, I'm going to show why I've been asking for these top fights, and I'm going to bring out the best performance. Do you think that will be the case then? Because you, you know, you've boxed largely journeymen so far, and you've always said they don't bring the best out of me. This fella's coming to win. Yeah, obviously I've had my best performance today with someone who's come to fight when I fought Ben Fields. He come to throw shots, and I got, I got the fight I asked for, and I'll, pr I'll probably say that's my best performance today in the pro rank. So with someone that's going to come and throw, I'm going to find my shots, going to pick my opportunities, and you're going to see that Saturday night. What do you think of Conor Parker then as a fighter as you look over to him over here? Yeah, obviously he's a good lad. He's obviously already lost to the British champ uh, former British champion, so I ain't leaving it to chance. I'm per uh, I prepared my best for it, and uh, Saturday night you're going to see the best performance of me. And that best performance, we've not seen a stoppage from you yet. I know it's probably on, on your mind as well, but... You've boxed, as I said, largely journeymen who don't really necessarily come to fight. They can be difficult to get out of there. He's going to come to fight. He's going to be swinging. Do you feel as though this could be the opportunity to get that elusive first stoppage? Ah, uh, we'll see. <laughs> obviously, the round's in a problem for me. I know I can go the distance. Obviously, it'd be nice to get a stoppage in there, but obviously, he's a tough lad. But obviously, I know I punch hard enough in the gym. Get punching lads, and they're not going to want to take it all night. So if he, if he gets caught with clean ones, then we'll see what happens. All right, look, you're both lovely blokes. I can tell that from the, the very, uh, the, you know, the, the build-up so far. But this is your last chance to sort of say something to each other, if you want to. Um, Ethan, anything you want to say to Connor? Best of luck Saturday, mate. Same back. 
Lovely. A lovely WBO European super lightweight title fights between two, two good, good guys. Um, thank you very much, you guys. And feel free as well if you would like to leave the table as well and we'll, we'll squash in a little bit more. We'll get a face off at the end with Ethan James and Connor Parker. So give them a moment. We'll squash in a little bit more. Let's speak to Stephanie Koikov. Wow. Now, Stephanie is a man who is coming over here and he's got a big challenge on his hands. He takes on Anthony Yard on Saturday night at the Telford International Centre. Now, Anthony Yard's got a huge fight lined up, but Stephanie's looking to, I guess, ruin those dreams. Um, Stephanie, welcome. Give us your thoughts, your opening sort of feelings heading into this fight with Anthony Yard. It will be a massive fight. He thinks they're both really prepared, really well trained. He thinks the fight will be perfect. He thinks the fight will be really good. And he's really confident in what he's going to bring to the table. And what do you think of Anthony Yard, Stephanie? I Anthony Yard. He's a unique boxer. He's really good, but he's not undefeatable. Have you seen weaknesses in Anthony Yard that you feel you can exploit on Saturday? Yes, he's seen a lot of them, but he's not going to speak about it now. Top secret weaknesses. Well, finally, you have 12 knockouts yourself. Uh, do you feel as though you have the power, and is it your intention to knock out Anthony Yard on Saturday? I think he said yes. Go on. He's got a, a good punch. He's going to use it on Saturday. But Anthony Yard's got a hard punch as well. So one of them is going to get knocked out on Saturday for sure. All right. Well, thank you, Stephanie. Let's, uh, before we speak to Anthony Yard, let's bring in trainer, manager, Tundi Ajayi. Um, how are you guys approaching this one? Because... We all know it should be Peterbiev next. It was meant to be Peterbiev in October. You needed to get a fight in. But clearly, the fighter that you're up against on Saturday has hunger, has power. Um, how are you approaching it? First of all, thank you, everyone, uh, for coming out this afternoon. Um, just like always, Dev, you know, um, Anthony Yard is a consummate professional lived in the gym since day one um, and nothing's changed uh, we've never prepared for a, an opponent per se we prepare for the future and that's how we go about our work same thing day in day out day in day out there and we're here today and this time away from the ring um, obviously it was meant to be Peterbiev in October but now Anthony hasn't boxed since December last year when he stopped Lyndon Arthur. Have you had a chance to kind of work on things and improve even more so that when you do eventually get hold of Peterbiev, it's the, an even better version of Anthony Yard than it could have been before? Well, as much as I would like to talk about Peterbiev, he's not what faces us on Saturday night. You know, uh, we've seen that mistake so many times when people overlook the opponent in front of them. And we're just not going to do that, you know. Personally, this is the hardest I've ever put into any fight uh, because I take this man in front of me serious and uh, Anthony the same. Uh, he'll speak for himself, but I can assure you that we've left no stone unturned and uh, it's going to be exciting while it lasts. Well, let's bring in the man himself, Anthony Yard. Um, Anthony, you're back. It's great to have you back. Um, thank you. Give, thank give, you. Us your, give us your opening thoughts heading into your return on Saturday night. Um, I'm just excited to be here. Um, I thank God. I thank everyone for coming as well. It's a good turnout. 
most of you might be here to see the, the main event, but <laughs> um, no, I'm always excited to be in the ring. Um, it's an opportunity. It's why I got into the sport. Um, I got someone in front of me on Saturday that looks hungry. He looks confident. He's here, he's got, you know. So I don't take no one lightly. Absolutely nobody. Um, all I know is, I don't know his record exactly. I don't really focus on my opponent too much, but I know he's got a, a similar knockout ratio to me. So <laughs> that's, to me, that's not no joke. This is boxing, this is light heavyweight, this is 10 ounce gloves. I want to be sharp, I want to be explosive, I want to be entertaining as usual. Everyone who interviews you, t you today, all the media here today, BT Sport, everyone will be asking you about Arta Baturbiev. It's very difficult to, it feels like it's difficult for you to be talking about this guy on Saturday night when that, you, it's like the elephant in the room, the elephant in the ring with you is Baturbiev, but it, you're completely non plus. It's not on your mind at all, Baturbiev. Who, who's Baturbiev? <laughs> no, no, um, that's just me joking about, but this is professional boxing. I'm not overlooking nobody. I could be in there with my little brother. I'm not overlooking nobody because this is professional boxing. This is a guy that has, he hasn't got nothing on YouTube. I don't know what to expect. Do you get what I'm saying? So I'm taking him seriously. I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna cut, listen. I'm not overlooking nobody. So again, after the fight, we talk about the future. No one's got a globe in front of them here. No one knows the future, so my only focus and all my energy is going into Saturday. Sometimes when, when people take fights before a big fight, the fight before the fight, they, uh, they look to get a few rounds in, they look to work on a few things, but it sounds like, and particularly with the hunger of your challenger on Saturday, it sounds like this is just going to be perhaps a vintage Anthony Yard performance. That's what, that's what you always expect when I, when I get in the ring. This ain't no cliche saying, it's just that I like to fight. Again, I don't like to, I like to, be, you know, you know the art of boxing, don't get hit, you know, land the shots you're meant to land or whatever, but it's entertainment. Everyone here that's going to be, watch and that's going to be watching, whether they're watching on BT Sports or, the, or they're there in the flesh, they want to see the knockout. That's everyone in boxing, even me, when I go to boxing fights, you're waiting for the big shot to land so you can jump up and down and go, oh. It's the same thing. Well, look, the, the world will be watching. Uh, it's on ESPN Plus as well in the States, and... Uh, in that world is Artur Baturbiev. He will be watching. Are you looking to send out a bit of a statement to everyone? How do you know he's going to be watching? Well, I'm sure he'll be watching. He's not going to not watch you. Who How doesn't do you want know? to watch Anthony Yard? How do you know? How do you know? He told me. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> but are you looking to send out a bit of a statement? Um, no, I'm not really focused on Baturbiev. Baturbiev is clearly and obviously a complete different fighter. Um, everything's just different. So that's why I focus on one thing at a time. Talking about opponents and how I'm going to approach the fight. After the first Lyndon Alpha fight, I fought a Southpaw. And everyone was saying, that's silly, why are you fighting a Southpaw? Like, it's nothing like, you need to fight someone that's got a, a long jab that's going to be on the back foot, etc. I said, okay. For me, it's getting the experience of every time I do a ring walk, every time I make weight for the fight, Every time I walk out and there's different faces in the crowd, different, different things happen. That's experience. Again, it's getting comfortable being in that situation. So um, this is that same thing. The styles might not match up, but I'm getting in the ring again. That's all that matters. It's good to have you back. Any, anything you want to tell your opponent or the, the fans at home ahead of Saturday as your sort of final comment? Um, no, I see him already. We shook hands. Um, it's business, um, but I take business very seriously. That's it. Thank you, Anthony. And, and a sort of right of reply, Stephanie, I don't know if you want to tell Anthony anything before Saturday night. This is your, your final chance. Uh, there's no, no, nothing to say. Everything will be decided on Saturday. Well, there we go. The return of Anthony Yard on Saturday night against Stephanie Koikov. It sounds like there's going to be a knockout. Um, so looking forward to that one. Let's, let's talk about the main event on Saturday night. I think we're going to do a bit of musical chairs as well. I can just see uh, Matt Rich <laughs> out of the corner of my eye telling people to come off stage. So let's, let's do a little bit of musical chairs without the music. little swap around here.
and in comes our translator. By the way, again, this, our Spanish translator also does the Queensbury social media. So, you know, we, we multitask over here at Queensbury. Um, I want to start with... I want to start with Josh Burnham. You are, uh, you are, I guess, leading the kind of game plan ahead of Saturday night for Janut Baluta's shot at, uh, at Liam Davis or his fight with Liam Davis. Tell us about your man Baluta here and why you think he's going to emerge victorious. Uh, yeah, I'm trying, <laughs> doing my best. Yeah, I'm not going to give too much away, obviously, but those are no Baluta. Do you know what I mean? One of those first in, last out of the gym sort of thing. <clears throat> No stone, le no stone left unturned, so, yeah, he'll be getting 100% Baluta on, on Saturday night. And what is 100% Baluta? What's he like? Voraciousness, savageness, psychopathic tendency. That's all I can really, that's the best way to describe it, I reckon. Well, just a reminder here, Liam, by the way, your mic is on. If, if anything, if at any point you want to say anything in response to Josh, feel free. Uh, Josh, you told me that uh, Baluta's going to spark Liam Davis out when oh, I come to yeah. see her. Talk to me about that. Um, I'm not going to go into it too much, to be honest. As I said, I'm not going to tell you what we're planning and whatever on the night, but yeah, that's how I can see it ending up. Look, you obviously rate your man here. Well, you, um, you said that he could be in with Floyd Mayweather and he'd be competitive, presumably a prime Floyd Mayweather you're talking about, or you, you feel as though he could be competitive with anyone. I... I Personally, I think that there's a couple of things missing from Baluta, do you know what I mean? And he doesn't go into the ring fearing anybody. There's not, not a single person in there I couldn't. He's got a granite chin, he's got a work rate like you've never seen before. And uh, yeah, I feel confident putting him with anyone, being competitive with anyone. Do you feel as though the fight's come a bit too early for Liam Davis? I do, yeah. Tell they all what? say that. They all say that. Yeah. I'm ready, trust me, I'm ready. I am ready. And you talked a lot saying about paracetamol and all this, I've seen it. Don't worry, mate, yeah, I've got true, a granite mate. chin. Yeah, good. I'm ready. We'll find out Saturday. Yeah, we'll find out Saturday. You, you best be careful yeah, walking around here saying that. Yeah, soy el jefe, soy el jefe el día, el sábado te espera un gran combate. Y ya verás. Man's got free knockouts. En tu casa vas a perder. He's got he said, free knockouts. He said he's the boss and in your house he's going to knock you out. Yeah, we're gonna Estoy see. listo para sábado, we're para dar un gran espectáculo y como siempre para Victoria. Have Estoy moment, preparado mate, para dos lados, pero te voy a, a noquear. Have your moment because it's over for you Saturday. <laughs> you do the same thing. <laughs> Estás un chico. You even... Estás un bambino. Todavía no has peleado con nadie. Es primer combate en tu vida grande, pero este sábado te voy a demostrar por qué yo soy el jefe. He said you're a child and this is your first big fight in your career and he's going to show that he's the boss. <laughs> I hope you're not relying on that because you're fucked if you are. Um, no translation needed for that particular one, Lou. Um, I think that one's, that one's pretty clear. Um, no translation, I'm not Spanish. Well, look, I think we've heard some thoughts, but this, this is your chance, Baluta. Tell us, tell us why you're going to win on Saturday night. Um, Deve te pregunta por que tu piensa que vos, usted va a ganar sábado noche. Uh, buenos días a todos. Uh, estoy listo para sábado y siempre tengo confianza en mí y este sábado sabe, se va a ver en el ring. Que voy a ganar por KO. Um, first he wants to say good day to everybody. He said he's been preparing for this. He's super confident in himself and he's getting ready for Saturday to win by knockout. Liam Davis is unbeaten in 12 fights. Why are you the man to beat Liam Davis? Um, Liam Davis nunca perder en su carrera. ¿Por qué usted será el primero? Este va a ser el primer combate que va a perder porque todavía no ha peleado con nadie. Es el primer, primer combate en su vida que está fuerte. Está peleando en su casa y yo voy a demostrar a, a toda su gente que voy a, a ganar este combate y voy a ganar por KO antes del límite. Um, he says he's never, Liam Davis has never fought against anybody. He's never fought anyone on his level. And he's going to go to his hometown here and he's going to beat him convincingly. Well, let's bring in Liam Davis. You're, we, we've heard a lot. Thank you again, Lou, for these translations. They, they've been fantastic. Um, he's going to come and beat you in your house. Thoughts? Yeah, I like to say, I like his confidence. I've heard it all before. I've had over 100 odd fights, never been knocked out in my life, and a man with three knockouts on his record is going to knock me out. Don't make sense to me. 
Why do people say that this fight could be too soon for you? Because Baluta said it before in an interview, Josh Burnham maintains it today. Is it too soon? Why are they saying this? They've got to believe that, haven't they? The, the, your man over here on the end has got to tell his fighter here that it's too soon, talk confidence in him. The last man I thought was ready to beat a new way. So say what you want, man. I'm ready for a fight. And I'm ready and I'm going to win. Trust me. No doubt in my mind I will win. I'll be the first man to knock him out. Make sure you've got your Paris down already, then. A mí no me ha noqueado nadie y peleando con cinco, cuatro, cinco uh, combates grandes, peleando con Michael Cola, con Dohoni, David Oliver, Brad Foster, pero tú solo hablas, eres un niño que habla mucho, pero en el ring se va a demostrar que yo soy el jefe. Te voy a caer la boca, ¿por qué hablas mucho, niño? He said he's a four great champions like Michael Conlon, TJ Dohoney, and he's never been beat, never been knocked out. You're just a kid who's talking a lot, and you're going to see on Saturday night. Uh, he needs to stop talking about Michael Conlon fight. You lost, man. There's no good in losing. No good losing. I lost on a split decision. I'll be, I'll be disgraced in myself. Losing ain't an option, mate. I'm here to win. Eso fue un combate con Michael Collan muy cerrado, eh, un combate de dos asaltos, pero todavía tú no has peleado a este nivel. Es primer combate tuyo que peleas a un nivel grande, pero yo voy a demostrar este sábado que soy el mejor y que voy a ganar este combate y vas a caer. ¿Por qué hablas mucho, niñato? Um, he said that he's fought Michael Cole and he's fought at these levels. Yes, it was a close fight and he lost, but you've never fought at this level. And he's going to show on Saturday and he's going to knock you out because you talk too much. Yeah, we're going to, like I say, have your moment because Saturday night you're going to see I'm the hardest hitting kid you've ever come across. Michael Conlon and that, yeah, they're good. They don't punch like me. Trust me, they don't punch like me. You're going to see, mate, what it's like to get punched. Ni tú no crees que hablas. You have no idea what you're talking about. So you're definitely not as strong as Michael Codlas. Ha! We're going to see, boy. We're going to see. I, I love this. I love that it's all being done via translation as well, yet the energy is there. Um, Liam, do you think you're going to surprise this fella? Do you think he's, he's going to feel something that he hasn't felt before in the ring? I, I think he's in for a shock, yeah, 100%. Like I say, they seem to underestimate me. And uh, I love it. Keep coming, because um, I'm ready to prove everyone wrong. It doesn't matter who in this room believes in me. I believe in me, and I know what I'm going to do. And trust me, Saturday night, I'm going to do it, and you're going to do nothing about it, boy. Vas a perder a tu casa, vas a perder. Voy a disfrutar a tu casa. Yo voy a ganar este combate, sí o sí. You're going to lose at home. You're going to lose in your hometown. You're too small, man. A mí me gusta You're la adrenalina. Me gusta tu gente que va este You're sábado. Too small. Va, va a ser una noche muy too mal para small. ellos. He's going to live on the adrenaline of your fans. It's going to be a bad night for them. Yo soy el capo. He's the boss. En el ring. They're going to call you SpongeBob after this Saturday night. Your new nickname, so I'm going to punch fucking holes in you, mate. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. Looking forward to the response to this one. Se va a perder mi traductor está perdiendo. Eres perdido un poco tú. No hablas. ¿Qué dice él bien? Um, he's saying I'm a bad translator and uh, SpongeBob reference didn't go to him. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, well, look, <laughs> we've had. A, I think well, you've been a good no, translator, Lou. Moment, I think it's. Let's, um, <laughs> let's let's get a little bit more then. Yonut, tell me, you have knocked out three people so far in your career, but you are absolutely adamant that you're going to knock out Liam Davis. Why? What gives you that confidence? Good luck with that, Lou. Um, usted tiene tres caos en su carrera. ¿Por qué Liam Davis será el cuarto? Cada vez estoy más fuerte. Y cada vez pego más fuerte. Yo estoy seguro en mí, confío en mí. Este sábado, esta pelea se va a terminar por cabo. 
Estoy preparado para 12 asaltos, pero este sábado va a terminar por KO. Um, because I'm getting stronger and stronger, I'm getting better and better. So I, I know I can knock him out. I'm, I know I'm preparing for 12 rounds, but I believe I can knock him out. I think he's got worse since joining Josh. I do. Any thoughts, Josh? Not really. No, I mean, my entrenador, my entrenador, my entrenador is very good. No, me cambiando mucho. Say again. Déjame hablar. Make sure you pass it already, boy. Mi entrenador es muy bueno. So mi entrenador es muy bueno. Bum. You've had a fucking mira, tu entrenador. Mira, tu entrenador. Yeah, I know. Job, I know. I know about you. You got nothing. You never taught nothing. You, he's come to you. you. What can you teach him? He's done the same Just, thing. Este es un que habla mucho, Just. What are you going to do? Se va a demostrar que sábado va a perder. Déjalo en paz. I'm going to do fuck all. I'm not a fighter. I'm a coach. I'm going to sit here and watch you get beat up. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going to sit here and relax. Yeah, we're going to see. Well, we are going to see. Um, there's a little taster. Saturday, it's a big one. It's the EBU European Super Bantamweight Championship. And before we do the face-offs, let's get a final word. Your newt. What would you like to tell Liam Davis ahead of Saturday? Um, you know, to tell him a message final for Liam. Bambino, hablas mucho, pero te va a caer la boca este sábado. Child, you talk a lot, but you're going to shut your mouth on Saturday. And Liam, over to you. Bring my belt Saturday. Meow. Bring my belt Saturday, because I'm taking it home with me, mate. Meow. You little, you little. Look at your frame, man. Well, there we have it. We're, we're, let's Estoy go. listo para este sábado. 100%. He's 100% ready for Saturday. Well, there you go. Everyone at this table is ready for Saturday. We're going to get some face-offs. We are going to need security, all of you. I know they're only little, right? But they can bang. And look, look, look at what they've just done. Uh, let's get some face-offs. We will see you on Saturday night for a big one. Live at the Telford International Centre on BT Sport. European Super Bantamweight title on the line, the return of Anthony Yard, title fights galore on the undercard, including Connor Parker against Ethan James. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>